This is Good Morning Indiana, working for you. A neighborhood that has seen more than its fair share of struggles, violence, and neglect is turning things around itself. Now here at 6 o'clock, how their efforts have pulled a community together. And our Classroom to Career series looks at how programs are helping students get ready for life after the classroom. This morning, our Aaron List shows us how students can save time and money with dual credit degrees. It's 6 o'clock on your Tuesday morning. Thanks for joining us. I'm Meredith Barrett. And I'm Lauren Casey. We have Todd Clausen with us this morning talking about today's forecast. Last night was beautiful, Todd. What can we expect today as people head out? You know, more of the same. Basically take the second half of yesterday's okay. weather and transport it to today. And it's going to be a nice one with low humidity and lots of sunshine out there. You'll need the sunglasses from start to finish today once the sun comes up. And some of you may need a light jacket. Yesterday we started off with that needed rainfall. Uh, no rain in the forecast for the day today. So you can kind of tuck that rain gear away for a little while. 51 in Bloomington and Terre Haute right now. 52 in La Fayette, but look at some of these 40s that continue to uh, become more prevalent on the map. Now down to 48 degrees in Logansport, 51 in Kokomo, as well as Frankfurt and Anderson. And sign of the question that temperatures could drop another couple degrees here this morning uh, before we start to warm once the sun comes up. But it's nice and quiet anywhere you go across the state of Indiana and much of the Midwest for that matter. So uh, temperatures will hold steady at least throughout the 8 o'clock hour, and then we'll start to moderate very, very quickly. Mid 60s by the time we get to 10 a.m. and by the time we get to the noon hour, we're looking at a temperature with mostly sunny skies of 73 degrees. Lauren. All right, Todd, thanks so much. We're keeping a close eye on traffic as you're heading out the door to start your Tuesday. Here's I 70 and German Church Road. Traffic's picking up on the east side, but everything's moving along just fine. No problems here for your commute. Let's take a look at it. Planning your drive times heading in from the east side, westbound I 70 from Post Road to I 65 at the north split. No issues. It is a 10 minute commute, so everything is traveling up to speed. Well, back here, it is an area that has faced struggles in Indianapolis, violence and neglect, but now one neighborhood is turning things around all on its own. And the hard work being done from within is now getting the recognition that it deserves. Our Alyssa Donovan is here this morning. Alyssa, the Far East Side Community Council received an award for the work they are doing to improve their neighborhood, and this is so important we highlight this. That's right. So what they received is the Collaborative Spirit Award. It's given out by the Indianapolis Neighborhood Resource Center. The award is a major accomplishment. Those involved say it's going to fuel continued change. The Far East Community Council has worked hard to be the voice for the community and make a difference. The grassroots organization spearheading a festival several months ago to provide resources to people on the east side. The east side festival brought together 50 organizations and showed the city what the area has to offer. The council says this wasn't all that. There are a lot of other groups working to improve the area. A lot of uh, organizations, there's a lot of individuals, and they all have the Far East Side at their heart. So they're really pushing to have um, a better Far East Side and a better city overall. The Far East Side Council works includes discussing solutions to end gun violence, ending food deserts, hosting back to school and toy drives. The council also works to build relationships with city leaders to make sure the voices from the neighborhood are heard. I've yet to hear anybody step up and say that this is unacceptable in Indianapolis. Well, meanwhile, the president of Central Indiana Fraternal Order of Police wants to know where's the outrage after another violent weekend here in Indianapolis. Rick Snyder with FOP Lodge 86 is calling out community leaders and politicians after the downtown shooting that injured six people. Police are still looking for a person of interest in that case. Snyder is concerned that people are growing numb to the acts of violence no matter or what kind of weapon is used. We had a total of 10 people shot in, in Indianapolis over the weekend, just over the weekend alone. Um, and it's not just shootings, it's stabbings, it's violence. Um, you know, people talk about we have a gun violence, we, a gun violence problem. We keep saying it's, it's, it's not a gun violence problem, it's a people violence problem. IMPD's downtown district captain says they're going to revisit the redistribution of their patrols and other resources like mobile cameras. Investigators believe that the downtown shooting began with a disturbance between two groups of young people near the Circle Center Mall. Metro police are trying to learn more surrounding a shooting victim who showed up at a local hospital. The man showed up at Eskenazi around 9.30 last night with a gunshot wound. This morning, he's in critical condition. Police say they have not determined where the shooting happened.
The Howard County Sheriff's Office is making changes after several inmates died by suicide this year. Call 6 Investigates has talked with family members who say the jail could have done more to protect their loved ones. Natasha King and Sarah Castile died back in March. Casey Roderick died on September 18th. All three were inmates in the Howard County Jail. Now keep in mind in the state of Indiana, it typically has about 8 to 12 suicides for the entire state in a year. We asked the Howard County Sheriff's Department for a copy of their suicide prevention policy. We haven't received that yet. However, the sheriff says they've implemented several changes like these. They've created signage in each housing unit that has a free hotline to reach a mental health advocate. They adjusted their shift change procedure to create more officer inmate contact. They'll begin implementing a crisis intervention team training for all training all medical personnel and correctional supervisors. And lastly, they contracted with a full time mental health specialist who started this month. A new update all the way from Rome in the conflict between Burbank Jesuit Prep School and the Archdiocese of Indianapolis. A Vatican office has suspended for now the Archdiocese decision to revoke Burbank's recognition as a Catholic institution. The decision came back in June when the school refused the Archdiocese order to fire a teacher who is in a same sex marriage. The school reached out to the Vatican's congregation for Catholic education, asking the office to rescind or set aside the decree. In a letter posted on the school's website, Burbuff's president says the archbishop's decree has been suspended for now pending a resolution of the school's appeal. This means Burbuff will be able to resume its normal sacramental celebrations. Here at 606, students at IUPUI are getting the chance to get two degrees without any additional time or money. The Indiana University School of Liberal Arts at IUPUI has launched this new program. And our Aaron Lish is joining us live outside of the school this morning. Aaron, saving time and money sounds pretty good. How exactly does this all work? Doesn't it sound amazing? This is the dual degree advantage program through the IU School of Liberal Arts and students have a chance to get their Bachelor of Arts through Liberal Arts to complement that first degree and it's all within that traditional four year period time frame. So really how this works is the Liberal Arts uh, Baccalaureate competencies are weighed for students whose first major is in another IUPY school and of course that second major would be in Liberal Arts. You have to of course meet all of those requirements for both degrees and complete them at the same time. And this is only for IUPUI students who are getting a degree for the first time. The purpose is to make these students stand out after college with two degrees and a full skill set with both soft and technical. Talking with the dean and the current student, they say this shows employers the ability to show critical thinking, leadership, intensive research skills, and understanding cultural understandings. These combinations create not only opportunities for students to go out into the workforce with the skills they need to succeed, but they'll carry these skills with them all the way through their careers. It's phenomenal. It is allowing me the opportunity to both major in liberal arts classical studies and biology and be able to graduate within four years, which is fantastic. So majors in liberal arts include things like geography, journalism, philosophy, and medical sociology. Something neat to point out. So if you go to the Purdue School of Science and then go for IU School of Liberal Arts, you will be getting degrees from two different schools. Pretty neat opportunity here. We're going to have a little bit more from that student you just heard from and how this is helping her prepare for life after her bachelor's degrees. But for now, back to you in the studio. Erin, thank you. You and your family can learn more about post-graduation options at the National College Fair. It's happening today at the Indiana Convention Center. You can connect with hundreds of colleges and universities. The fair is happening from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. and the whole entire thing is free. You can get a head start by registering at go to myncf.com. And Todd, once you're done at the College Fair, you can uh, sit outside for a nice lunch. Yeah, absolutely. I encourage you to get outside for a lunch, whether that is finding a patio to eat on at a local business or uh, maybe just taking your lunch and finding an outdoor picnic table in a park. It's going to be absolutely beautiful today from start to finish as the kids head off to school here. 55 degrees might need the light jacket as the kids come home from school. 79 degrees with lots of sunshine in the forecast. So skies are clear all across central Indiana. The only thing we really have to focus on here throughout the day today is the temperature. Our normal high is 74. Highs in northern locations today will be well above that in the upper 70s with mostly sunny skies. Temperatures won't really differ a whole 
whole lot here across central Indiana today. We're all in the same air mass, but a few 80s will be possible here in southern locations. Bedford over towards Seymour and then in and around the metro area. High temperatures in the mid to upper 70s. Absolutely beautiful. Today is the best weather day of the entire week. We'll talk more about the rest of your forecast coming up in just a few minutes. Todd, thank you. In order to close the skills gap by 2027, Indianapolis needs an additional 215,000 people with job ready credentials. After the break, how a new push from the mayor's office is helping to fill these jobs by providing mentors to high school grads. And we have Shay Goodpaster, our photographer, in our live drive vehicle. You can see a dash cam view. He's on the east side. I 70 near Post Road, where traffic is moving along just fine this morning. We'll continue to keep you updated on any crashes or delays that might slow you down for your Tuesday. It's 610. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Good Morning Indiana, 613 here on your Tuesday, and we're keeping you updated on traffic. No problems here on I-70 at West Street as you're heading through tours or away from the South Split and downtown. Just a reminder, the Meridian Street ramp system is closed through Friday. Well, Hiring Hoosiers is RTV6's initiative to connect you to resources available to help you succeed not only in your career, but in your education to get there. In order to close the skills gap by 2027, Indianapolis needs an additional 215,000 people with those job-ready credentials. Amanda Starantino shows us a new push from the mayor's office to create the next generation of qualified Hoosiers to fill these jobs by providing mentors to high school grads. It is one of the first steps to the beginning of Jessica Ocelot's dream career of being a nurse. The 18-year-old Lawrence Central grad is a freshman at IUPUI. Jessica has a lot to be proud of. Being a freshman nursing student means a lot because I get to just, like represent my family and that means a lot to me. But even this excited first-year college student knows a helping hand, or in this case, a text, can really give her a leg up with the applications, enrollment, paying for college, and getting classes started. That is why she applied for the pilot round of Indy Achieves Mentorship Program. It is a 10-month commitment to change the lives of youth and adults in Marion County by keeping them on track to enroll and successfully start college. All Jessica has to do when she needs help is simply send a text. When I have her like on my phone, I can just text her and ask her questions. I had asked her questions about the bill that I received and financial aid and all that. I feel like I have like a like an older sibling really because like I can just text her whenever it's not like so formal. On the other end of those text messages is Ruth Morales, a graphic information systems analyst for the city of Indianapolis. Ruth volunteered to be a mentor with Indy Achieves program because it hits close to home. I kind of went through a similar experience and if I would have had this type of mentorship program, I feel like it would have been really helpful. There is a support system kind of assuring them like, hey, everything's going to be fine. Let me just find out. Let me get more information who you can talk to. With this new program, Indy Achieves aims to raise Indianapolis's college attainment number to 65% by the year 2027. Somewhere between 10% and 40% of students who want to go to college and tend to go to college um, never make it there. They apply, um, they graduate from high school, but then for some reason, and something happens during the enrollment process and they never matriculate into the fall semester. So the mentorship program was really started um, as an initiative to uh, directly address that. The program runs from February through December and more than 350 students have been paired with personal mentors this year. They don't know what they don't know about the enrollment process, so sometimes they miss an email or they miss a form and they get off track. And sometimes getting off track means that they won't enroll, so the mentor is able to, to intervene. It's a process that can be difficult, but thanks to the guidance Jessica has, the first steps of her college path have been made a little more clear. I'm kind of scared, but it's it's going to be fun because, I, I mean, I have her to help me roof, and it's, it's, it should be good. The mentor we spoke with says it's not a big time commitment and India Chiefs provides all the tools to help mentors be a good resource for their mentees. Students interested in applying to Ivy Tech or IUPUI for the fall of 2020 can sign up for the new round of mentorships beginning this coming February. To apply as a mentor or a mentee, you can head to hiringhoosiers.com. All right, let's take a look at the weather with Todd. All right, it's a little cooler this morning than it has been as we've been running well above normal and our high temperatures 
have been in the 80s and even the 90s throughout much of this month. Well, today we're down to 79 for our high temperature, but that is actually still above normal. Our normal high this time of year is 74 degrees. So even though it's a little bit cooler, we're actually inching closer to where we should be this time of year. But this 79, oh, that's going to feel real nice later on this afternoon when you throw in the sunshine, the light winds, and also the low humidity. Here's the view this morning as you look from downtown off to the north. No visibility issues here in the metro area. There's been a little bit of patchy fog up in the Lafayette area this morning, but that too has basically fallen apart and visibilities have gotten a lot better there. 55 degrees, that's the current temperature. Light winds at the southwest at five miles per hour. So some of you are in the 40s this morning. Crawfordsville, Zionsville over towards Greensburg at 48 degrees. Everybody else very close to the 40s in Bloomington and Peru running a little bit warmer again here in the city as well as Muncie with that temperature of 55. But you notice the cool pocket of air is almost right on top of us. Extends up into Michigan down to our south. But you notice the warmer temperatures here off towards the west already uh, starting to moderate into the 50s and 60s. And that's what's going to be heading our way, working our way throughout the remainder of the week. So this is the coolest morning that we will deal with going forward in the forecast. And then high temperatures will actually start to moderate as well back up into the mid 80s by the weekend. So it's nice and quiet for us today. Just a few high thin clouds will filter in here as the day goes on. And with all that sunshine, notice how quickly our temperatures warm across the area. Quickly into the mid 70s already by 2 p.m. And then high temperatures today, they will be topping off in the mid to upper 70s for you. Probably getting up to 79 degrees in between the 4 and 5 o'clock hour. Then this evening, you are just fine with temperatures that will be falling back down into the 60s with partly cloudy skies. Look at that sunset though now, 739 in the morning. And then tomorrow, you wake to temperatures in the 50s and 60s. It's cool, but it's not as cold as it is, or cooler, we should say. It's not cold this morning, uh, just more seasonable than it has been. But tomorrow will be a little bit warmer uh, across the board. And then here's your forecast for tomorrow. There's a little more in the way of cloud cover tomorrow as a little system starts to make its way in. Not expecting a lot in the way of rainfall, but don't be shocked if you see a stray shower or two make their way through the area tomorrow afternoon. If you did see it, it would be very, very light. We're not expecting any strong storms or heavy rainfall. And then once we get into the weekend, I mentioned that warm up. Uh, there it is, Saturday and Sunday into the mid 80s. In fact, Sunday and Monday, some locations once again could get close to 90 degrees. Lauren. All right, Todd, thanks so much. We have Shea Goodpaster still in our live drive vehicle showing you what your commute's going to look like. And this is westbound I-70 on the east side heading towards the downtown area. You can see it is smooth sailing there. No major issues to slow you down. Let's take a look at our map. Plan out your drive here on southbound I-69 at this hour. It is a 14-minute drive from State Road 13 down to the I-465 ramps. Just a slight delay there near 96th Street, adding about one minute to your morning commute. Other than that, no issues for your morning drive at this hour. Crews will demolish the dangerous part of a building hit by two vehicles just before noon yesterday. Investigators say a car and a truck plowed into the building at East 22nd Street and North College Avenue, causing part of the building to collapse. One person inside the truck was hurt. Crews searched the building but did not find anyone inside. We are still waiting to learn what will happen to the rest of the building. Another vaping-related death brings the number nationwide to nine. The governor of Kansas says that a man over the age of 50 died recently after an illness that was linked to vaping. Governor Laura Kelly says the man also had underlying health conditions. Several others have fallen ill from vaping in the state. The CDC says there have been about 530 cases of lung injury related to e-cigarettes. Officials say one person in Indiana has died in connection to a vaping-related illness. A college fan holds a sign wanting beer money on national TV. Ahead in our Trending 6, what he's doing with the massive amount of money he's raised so far. Call 1877, only ATT. Welcome back to Good Morning Indiana, 623 here on your Tuesday. We're keeping a close eye on traffic. Good morning to you in the Whitestown area, I-65, your State Road 334. Traffic here is moving along just fine. No crashes right now to slow you down. Before you head out the door, it's time for the Trending Six. These are some of the stories that everyone is sharing online today that you'll want to know about. Believe it or not, what you're looking at is not NASA video from the surface of Mars. It's broad daylight video from Indonesia. The red planet effect is due to a haze from nearby forest fires filtering out the sunlight. Experts say this is called Rayleigh scattering when light particles are scattered without a chance 
a change in wavelength. Interesting. Well, a corn maze in North Carolina is honoring a hometown hero. Riley Howell was killed earlier this year tackling a gunman in the UNC Charlotte. The maze includes a portrait of Howell and the word hero. Maze organizers say part of the admission fees will go towards the Riley Howell Foundation Fund. It supports organizations that benefit victims of gun violence. Firefighters with Rancho Cucamonga Fire Department in California welcomed nine newborns earlier this year. This week, the babies and their firefighting dads had a photo shoot to celebrate. The department shared the photos on Facebook saying we are thrilled to see our RCFD fire family keep growing. Nestle is launching deluxe customizable versions of their Kit Kat bar. You'll be able to choose from 1,500 flavor combinations, including Earl Grey, whiskey, and ginger. The bars will also feature personalized packaging. Each bar, however, will set you back about $17, but you're gonna have to go to the UK to get one. Well, if you're thinking of taking a trip overseas, Antarctica may not be at the top of your list, but Airbnb is driving a hard bargain. Right now, the company is accepting applications for an all-expense paid trip to the frozen continent to help with environmental research. Airbnb is calling it the Antarctic Sabbatical. Five people will be chosen to help scientists with snow samples, climbing key glaciers, and visiting the South Pole. I think our Todd Klassen might mm -hmm. need to sign up for that. Sounds I'd right up his so. alley. Well, a college football fan who asked for beer money on national TV raised more than $1 million. On ESPN College Game Day broadcast, Carson King held up this sign saying Bush Light Supply needs replenished and included his Venmo username. Well, within 30 minutes, he raised about 400 bucks. But when the word got out that King was going to donate the money to Iowa Children's Hospital, those donations went through the roof. Bush Beer and Venmo even matched some of that money. And I know we had that story when we first heard about it, but it seems like the money total just keeps going up. It does. Yeah, that's it awesome. It does. Really incredible and hopefully it inspires other young people to do something similar. Yeah, yeah I think he was cool. at $157,000 on Friday when he was at Good Morning America, yeah. just yeah. in his Venmo account, not yes. the matching dollars. Yeah. And now here we are, over one million. Crazy. Really, really great. All right, outside right now, a little cooler than it has been. Be prepared for that as you walk out the door this morning. As temperatures are in the 40s and 50s, but we warm very, very quickly here throughout the morning hours. We'll be into the mid-70s already as we go through mid-morning and into the afternoon hours. And then once we get to the afternoon hours, we really don't warm a whole lot further, up to about 79, 80 degrees for our high temperatures. But skies will be mostly sunny from start to finish. It should be a beautiful Tuesday for us all across the area. All right, Todd, thank you. It's only Tuesday, but some of us already have our eyes on the weekend. If you're still in need of plans, we're giving away tickets to the Indianapolis Ballet. Keep watching Good Morning Indiana for your chance to win. Plus, we're keeping a close eye on your commute as you're heading out the door to start your Tuesday. Shay Goodpaster giving you a live look here from our live drive at Dash Cam on 465 southbound, heading through Beach Grove. Good morning to you. Traffic here is moving along up to speed. No issues to slow you down. Stay with us. We'll be right back after this short break. You love us. Get obsessed. Order online. This is Good Morning Indiana, working for you. He's leaving to take care of his health. Now at 6.30, the bittersweet goodbye for a prosecutor who might be taking his place. And a neighborhood that has struggled with violence and neglect. Now things are starting to turn around. More coming up on how the people who live there are making it happen. Saving money and saving time. Coming up in Hiring Hoosiers, how high school students are getting a jump start on college to help them start to make that money more quickly. All right, here at 6.30, I want to welcome you into Good Morning Indiana. I'm Lauren Casey. And I'm Meredith Barrick, meteorologist Todd Clausen joining us. It's chilly out there this morning. Yeah, you know, a little cooler than it has been. Our normal low this time of year is 53 degrees, so we're actually right okay. on par for where it should be. We've just <laughs> Not been used to it. kind yeah. of spoiled a here. A shock to the system. Yeah, a little shock to the skin out there this morning. There's no doubt about that. So some of you may want to have the light jacket, or if you're like Meredith and Lauren, put it on the heat in the car uh, just for a little while as you get going here this morning. Uh, sunglasses needed throughout the entire day and your workout's good to go. You don't have to worry about the rain gear whatsoever. So temperatures this morning in the low to mid 50s in most locations, 51 in Bloomington, 55 right now in Indy. And there have been temperatures uh, this morning that have been down into the 40s. Logansport, you are at 48 and you're now up to 50 degrees, 51 in Anderson as we just have some high thin clouds that'll drift in as the day goes on. Otherwise, completely sunny skies and with the low humidity, it's going to be that bright blue 
blue sky for us out there throughout the day today. So there's a live look from downtown to the north over the course of the next few hours. Once the sun comes up, we will see the temperatures start to moderate. But until that sun comes up, we stay in the 50s. We make the jump up into the 60s. By the time we get to 10 a.m., should be in the 70s by the noon hour. And then near 80 later on this afternoon. More on the rest of today and a look ahead coming up in just a few minutes. All right, Todd, thanks so much. We're keeping a close eye on your Tuesday morning commute. It's been a pretty smooth one so far. This is I-65 and I-70 at the North Split. You can see lots of cars making their way across your screen, but everything is traveling up to speed. No crashes or delays here in downtown to slow down your morning commute. It will be up to the Marion County Democratic Party to choose a successor for County Prosecutor Terry Curry. Curry stunned the public on Monday with the announcement he was leaving office to continue a battle with prostate cancer that he had kept private until now. Curry was met with applause as he entered the room where he announced he was stepping down with three years still left in his term. He says based on his health, this was best for him and his family. He says as he walks away from this position, he is clear about what he wants people to remember about his administration. We restored integrity to the office, that people in the office have the ability, and I'm going to tell you, people are going to shake their heads, <clears throat> that they have the ability to say, I work at the Marion County Prosecutor's Office and be proud about it. Curry's time in office included two of the most notorious criminal cases in the state, the convictions of three people behind the fatal 2012 Richmond Hill explosion and the 2013 conviction of former IMPD officer David Bassard, who was driving his patrol car drunk when he hit and killed a motorcyclist. Curry took over as prosecutor in 2010 and was reelected in 2014 and 2018. Chief Trial Deputy Ryan Mears will serve as interim prosecutor. Mears is also expected to be considered for the permanent position. The Marion County Democratic Party will have 30 days to select Curry's replacement. That person will serve the rest of Curry's term through the end of 2022. At 634, the Far East side has faced struggles like violence and neglect for years now, but now the neighborhood is being recognized. The Far East Side Community Council receiving an award for the work it's doing to improve that area. Our Lisa Donovan is live here in studio, and Lisa, there's a specific event that's making a big difference there. That's right, Lauren. Earlier this year, the Far East Side Community Council put on the East Side Festival. It was an opportunity for people to see what the area has to offer. The festival brought dozens of vendors to the neighborhood. It was a way to bring people together and show the great things that the area has. It was also a way to share critical resources that some in the community may not have known were available. The Indianapolis Neighborhood Resource Center took notice of the event, saying it's exactly the kind of work they want to recognize with the Collaborative Spirit Award. When you think about the Far East Side, a lot of times the area gets painted in a negative way, and this was an opportunity for residents to say, no, we're here, we care, and we've brought together 50 vendors from across the Far East Side and parents and children and groups that really care about the community. Along with the festival, the council also works on several other issues on the east side, like gun violence and food deserts. People involved in the Far East Side Council say the award is great recognition of the work they're doing, but there's a lot more to be done. Alyssa, thank you. A woman is dead after being hit by a vehicle on the city's east side. The crash happened around 9 last night on the 1100 block of North Rural Street. Police believe the woman was in the street when she was hit by a driver. She was pronounced dead at the scene. If you have any information about this crash, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers at 317-262-TIPS. At 6.35, a man from Marion who was reported missing two weeks ago has been found dead. The Grant County Sheriff's Department says the body of 64-year-old Henry Schneider was found near some woods in eastern Grant County on Monday. A silver alert was issued for him back on September 15th. So far, police have not released any other information. In northwest Indiana, police have arrested the president of the Gary City Council for taking the law into his own hands. They say he fired gunshots at teenagers he accused of stealing his car over the weekend. And they also say he briefly kidnapped one of those teens. Ron Brewer was arrested on Sunday, but so far, 
far, he has not been formally charged. Police say he and his wife tracked down their stolen car to East Chicago, and that Brewer fired shots at the teens inside. Brewer is then accused of grabbing one of those teens and taking him back to Gary. Brewer's attorney is defending his actions, claiming the Gary Councilman was making a legal citizen's arrest. At 636, hundreds of General Motors workers from two Indiana plants will pick it together as the nationwide strike continues into day nine. Employees from the Kokomo and Marion plants will meet in Marion to show solidarity in the union's push for higher wages and the reopening of the plants, GM plants to close. The workers at the massive GM assembly plant in Fort Wayne say that they're finding strength in the union workers' solidarity. I don't know as far as um, money-wise, like how long I could last or go on, but I'm still going to fight and I'll still be out here. The UAW says some progress has been made during those negotiations, but a deal has not been reached. The workers will receive strike pay of $250 a week should they hit day 15 mark next week, but that's a drastic cut from their weekly pay. For the second time this month, Governor Eric Holcomb is on an international trip to drum up business benefiting Hoosiers. The governor and a group of business leaders arrived in China on Monday. They'll spend several days there, then move on to India. While they are there, Holcomb will also get to watch the Pacers play the Sacramento Kings in the first NBA game ever held in India. It is an opportunity for students at IUPUI to get two degrees without having to fork over more time or money. Yeah, the IU School of Liberal Arts has a new program to support its students, getting them classroom to career ready and making them stand out to employers. Our own Aaron Lish joining us live this morning outside of the school. And Aaron, we love saving time and money. But what does this program all entail? This is an amazing opportunity. It's the dual degree advantage program, and it was designed to position students to be successful after graduation and giving them that advantage for their future careers. And students are telling me that this is really broadening their college experience. It's phenomenal. It is allowing me the opportunity to both major in liberal arts, classical studies and biology. Through the dual degree advantage program at IUPUI, students like Jocelyn Blackburn can get two degrees without any additional expenses or time. I have to graduate within four years in order to pursue med school and in order to make sure that I'm not spending a ton of extra money. How this works is the IU School of Liberal Arts Baccalaureate competencies are waived for students whose first major is in another IUPUI school. This program allows students to combine both a practical career focused uh, college experience with with an opportunity to follow their passions. And that's exactly what Blackburn is doing. Plus what she's learning will support her future career in medicine. So definitely what I've learned in my classical studies classes will translate perfectly to the real world and perfectly to my career path as hopefully a physician one day. So there is a list of all the different majors in the School of Liberal Arts. Plenty of different options here. You have economics, French, geography, history, journalism, philosophy. So this is a great opportunity for students just broaden their horizons and walk away here with two degrees. Back to you in the studio. Erin, thank you. Take a look. If your ID or driver's license doesn't have one of those little stars in the top right corner, you might want to take a trip to the BMV. The TSA is getting ready for a change happening just over over a year from now. On October 1st, 2020, your ID needs one of those stars if that's the identification you're using to get on a flight. The star means your license is a real ID is real ID compliant, a standard set by the federal government for all licenses and ID cards issued by states. You can still use a passport or other approved ID to fly, but if you're using your license, it needs that star or you'll be turned away by the TSA. At 640, it's time for our dog walking forecast. And it's a good one to be out there today, walking your favorite four-legged friend. You'll all enjoy lots of sunshine, low humidity, and very, very comfortable temperatures. And look at our cute little dog here this morning, Annie, just uh, sitting there on the couch, getting ready to go out for her walk. And thanks to Vicki uh, for sending uh, Annie in. She's got the remote control there, controlling the TV as well, looks like. So green paws from start to finish for you today with all that sunshine 
sunshine temperatures will be climbing into the mid to upper 70s later on this afternoon, which is still a little bit above our normal high of 74. Tomorrow we're still in the low 80s, a little cooler on Thursday, but then look at this. By the time we get to Saturday, high temperatures are back up into the mid 80s, maybe near 90 degrees. We'll talk more about that coming up in your seven-day planning forecast in just a few minutes. All right, Todd, thanks so much. Well, they are officially a Catholic organization again, at least for now. Next on Good Morning Indiana, a ruling from the Vatican and what it means for an Indianapolis school. And strong words from a young climate activist for leaders from around the world. How a teenager called them out publicly for their failure to take action on climate change. It's 642. We'll be right back. Welcome back. It is 644 on your Tuesday and our Shea Good Pastor is driving our live drive vehicle. This is a dash cam view. He's been traveling to the west side, westbound I-70, approaching I-465, getting ready to hop on northbound I-465 in that area. And you can see everything is clear. No problems here to slow you down. This morning, Rome has weighed in on the conflict between Brabath Jesuit Preparatory School and the Archdiocese of Indianapolis. A Vatican office has temporarily suspended the decision to revoke Brabath's recognition as a Catholic institution. That decision came back in June when the school refused the archdiocese order to fire a teacher who's in a same-sex marriage. The school reached out to the Vatican's Congregation for Catholic Education asking the office to rescind or set aside the decree. In a letter posted on the school's website, Brebuff's president says the archbishop's decree has been suspended for now pending a resolution of the school's appeal. This means that Brebuff will be able to resume its normal Catholic sacramental observance. Breaking news out of Britain this morning. The UK Supreme Court has ruled that the suspension of Parliament by British Prime Minister Boris Johnson was illegal. The unanimous ruling of the court upheld a ruling by Scotland's highest court, which said Johnson had illegally acted to suppress scrutiny of his strategy to remove Britain from the European Union. The decision is a huge defeat for the Prime Minister, and it essentially rules that he lied to the Queen when he asked her to suspend Parliament. Opposition lawmakers accused Johnson Johnson of trying to shut down political efforts to stop what is known as a no-deal Brexit on October 31st. They say such a move could damage Britain's economy, leading to potential shortages of goods imported from other countries. At 645, pressure is growing in Washington to possibly begin more formal impeachment proceedings against President Trump. It comes after the president admitted to talking to Ukraine's president about potential presidential rival Joe Biden. Ukraine's leader said that there's been no basis for an investigation of Biden and his son, who worked for an energy company in the country. There are reports that Trump ordered an annual military aid to Ukraine to be withheld before his July call with the country's president. Now, even Democrats who are reluctant to talk impeachment say it may be the only way forward. He may force us to go down this road, and we may very well have crossed the Rubicon here. Well, the president has done not, says he has done nothing wrong, that his Justice Department is still refusing to release a whistleblower complaint that news reports say express concerns over the phone calls. A House committee has set a Thursday deadline for that complaint to be made public. The FBI has arrested a U.S. soldier on a number of terrorism allegations, including plans to bomb a news network and targeting a presidential campaign. Private Jarrett William Smith was arrested at Fort Riley, Kansas. Smith is accused of telling an informant about plans to place a large vehicle bomb outside of CNN. Court documents say the soldier also discussed targeting Democratic presidential candidate Beto O'Rourke for assassination. Young people are dominating a UN summit on climate change in New York. Dozens of heads of state took a pledge to take on to take action rather on global warming. But a 16-year-old activist who's galvanized the movement has harsh words for world leaders saying they've waited too long to do something about the climate. If you really understood the situation and still kept on failing to act, then you would be evil. What you can talk about is the money and fairy tales of eternal economic growth. How dare you? President Trump actually made a brief and unexpected appearance at the conference. He and his administration have been criticized by some for ignoring worldwide scientific evidence of climate change. Fall is here, but forecasters say the weather may not feel very fall-like in some places. A new forecast from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration says all 50 states should see a warmer than average fall. Northern Alaska, the Southwest, and much of New England are most likely to be warm. NOAA latest prediction reflects the warming trend that has taken 
place over the past few decades. Also, hurricane season isn't officially over until November 30th, and that means the Gulf Coast and East Coast states could still get soaked. At five, not 548, 648, the show is almost <laughs> over. 648 here at home. We're seeing some warmer than usual weather too, Todd. Yeah, you know, much of this month has been warm. We had a streak there of 14 days in a row where we at least got to 80 degrees. Uh, that came to an end yesterday, but today we'll be back up close to 80 degrees with highs that most likely will be in the upper 70s for most of us. But really, it's a near perfect day today with those temperatures, the sunshine, the light winds, some small rain chances enter the forecast on Wednesday. But the other weather headline will be warmer temperatures again heading into the weekend. So sky is just starting to brighten here across central Indiana. It's going to be a beautiful sunrise for us with hardly a cloud out there. The temperature sits at 55 degrees. The winds are just very, very light and the humidity is way down here this morning. That's one of the reasons why we've been able to cool it off very quickly. But it's also a reason uh, we'll be able to warm it up very quickly here once that sun gets higher above the horizon. 40s from Greensburg to Columbus now. It's 52 right now in Lafayette. 50 in Greencastle. So it's one of the cooler mornings we've seen, but nothing abnormal for this time of year. Our normal low is 53 degrees, so still running above that officially at the airport in Indy. But here's the skies clear, some high thin clouds off to our west, and they'll scoot in here at times throughout the afternoon hours, but they should not cause any issues whatsoever into the 70s already by the noon hour. So the temperatures will hold pretty steady the next few hours, and then they take the jump by 10 a.m. into the mid 60s, low 70s by time we get to the noon hour and then high temperatures today will be in the mid to upper 70s for us and throughout the evening hours should be splendid temperatures in the 70s falling into the 60s and their mainly clear sky it's just a really really nice day for us from start to finish now tomorrow morning not quite as cool but we're still in the 50s and 60s so we'll call it comfortable for you to start off your Wednesday and then as we go throughout the day on Wednesday there are some minor changes that will occur there's definitely more clouds around throughout the day tomorrow and don't be shy if there's a quick passing sprinkle or two. It's nothing that's going to cancel any plans for you tomorrow if they involve being outside. Uh, if you do see one of these stray, uh, stray sprinkles, it's just going to last uh, very brief. The better chance of rain will actually be late tomorrow night into the day on Thursday in southern locations as a little disturbance passes to our south. So going forward the next three days, tomorrow 78 degrees, just about a 30% chance of a stray shower as we work our way into Thursday. A mixture of sun and clouds, 76 degrees degrees, very seasonable, and then we'll start to turn up the heat Friday up to 83 degrees. And as you look at your seven day planning forecast, it'll carry us into the weekend. High temperatures by the time we get to Sunday and then even to Monday of next week, Lauren, could be approaching 90 degrees in some locations. All right, Todd, thank you so much. As you're heading out the door this morning, not only is it a little bit cooler out for your commute, but everything is moving along just fine. Our Shea Good Pastor is driving our live drive vehicle. This is a dash cam view here of I-70 eastbound. Coming in from the west side, heading towards the downtown area. Everything is moving along up to speed. No crashes here to slow you down. He may not be in the States anymore, but Lance Stevenson is still balling. The former Pacer is playing professionally in China this year, and so far he has been one of the stars of the league. Watch this. Time running out in the first half. Lance takes a deep three, nails it. Gives us a little old school Lance air guitar. Stevenson finished for, with 35 points for the Li Ning Flying Leopards in their win. Stevenson signed with the Chinese team this summer after spending last season with the LA Lakers. Still to come, it is a Guinness World Record flinging a food. We're going to show you what these people are trying to toss coming up after the break. And we have a giveaway for you here this morning. If you want to take someone to the ballet, we have a pair of tickets for you to see this weekend's performance by the Indianapolis Ballet, an evening of Balanchine. It's at the Toby Theater at Newfield. You can go see Saturday night's performance on us. All you need to do is be the sixth caller right now. Here's the number, 317-269-1459. Good luck. We'll be right back. And be sure to follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Welcome back to Good Morning Indiana, 655 on your Tuesday, and we're keeping a close eye on traffic. This is I-65 at the South Split. No problems here for your commute. Just a reminder, we do have a lane closure, though, because the I-70 Meridian Street ramp is closed. 
So you'll need to stay out of that one lane on that ramp. We'll keep you updated on that project. Okay, Meredith, so have you ever tried to set a world record before? No. No, neither. <laughs> Maybe something legitimate or there's also those weird, obscure world records. So here is one we bet you never thought of, tossing tortillas. Hmm, never there is it. a new world record for it. <laughs> David Rush of Idaho just set this new world record. Oh, way to go, David. Watch there this goes. throw. Rush is a STEM educator and he holds 100 world records as part of his effort to promote science and technology. He tossed that tortilla 54 feet 5 inches at the Science of Guinness World Records exhibit in Toronto. Rush easily beat out tortilla tosses by two other competitors to easily beat the old world record of 30 feet 1 inch. It's all about the flick of the wrist. And you know what I have to say about that? What a waste of tortillas. <laughs> I know. Think about all the quesadillas all right. that, that made. Could, could have been made. Huh. All right. Just For the love know. of science, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. All right. We do want to talk to Todd right now. It's chillier as you head out the door today. Yeah, you know, cooler than it has been. It's a, it might be a little bit of a shock to you as you walk out the door this morning. Uh, but we will warm pretty quickly going forward in this forecast. Still in the 50s, though, at 8 a.m. But as soon as that sun gets a little higher above the horizon, we're into the low 70s already by the noon hour. Close to 80 for your high temperature this afternoon with mostly sunny skies, low humidity. Really just a terrific day for us from start to finish going forward in the forecast. Could be a few spot showers tomorrow, though it's partly cloudy, 78, 76 on Thursday. But then we start to crank up the heat once again, heading into the weekend as highs get back into the mid to upper 80s. All right, Todd, thanks so much. And thank you for joining us. We're going to be back right here in 25 minutes and all throughout Good Morning America with local news, weather, and of course, traffic updates. And remember, all your news throughout the day can be found on the RTV6 app. Take a look at this Stunning shot from the IMS Pagoda. Mm. A beautiful morning out there. We hope you have a great rest of your day.